Hello everyone. Today we are talking about Transport Layer Security, better known as TLS. First of all, TLS is the updated version of Secure Socket Layer, or SSL, since version 3.0. So today SSL is obsolete and only TLS is used. The goals of TLS are 1. Cryptographic security, including E2E encryption with a symmetric session key and covering integrity with HMAC. The TLS protocol itself operates on two layers, the record layer and the handshake layer. Applications or protocols are based on TLS and if a client-server connection is established, the protocol on the server side are bound to dedicated ports for the establishment of the connection. The handshake layer itself is made up of the handshake protocol, which is responsible for the establishment of the session, the change cipher spec protocol, which activates newly negotiated security parameters, the alert protocol, which alerts in case of errors, and the application data protocol, which passes through all the necessary data to the record layer, which we will cover shortly. But first, let's look at how the handshake protocol works. If a client wants to connect to a server using, for example, HTTPS, they initialize the session with a message client hello. This message contains a random number which is used to calculate the pre-master secret as well as the supported cryptographic functions. The random number is also used to prevent replay attacks. If this connection is part of an already established session, the session ID is also part of the client hello. The server answers with a bunch of its own commands. First, server hello indicates that the server supports a cryptographic function which the client has sent as a preference to the server. The server hello contains the chosen cipher, the session ID and also a random number. Next, usually the server sends his certificate alongside the certification hierarchy. This way the client can authenticate the server. If it is not possible to encrypt the secret values with the server's certificate, the server can circumvent this by using server key exchange. It contains either the public RSA key or a Diffie-Hellman parameter to send the pre-master secret. If the server also wishes to authenticate a client, which is by no means standard, he can request the client's certificate with this message. If all is done, the server concludes by sending server hello done, which triggers the client to validate the certificate regarding temporal or other parameters. You have probably seen this message before, which indicates a TLS certificate that has not been uh, reactivated in a timely manner. But for now, let's assume the certificate is in fact valid. Now it's again the client's turn. If he was prompted for his own certificate, he sends it to the server. With sending client key exchange, the client sends the pre-master secret encrypted to the server. Now client and server have all the necessary information to calculate the master secret from the pre-master secret and the random numbers from client and server hello. Every cryptographic key during this session is derived from this master secret. If the client transmitted his certificate, he signs it with the master secret as well as all other outgoing messages from here on out. After the certificate has been validated, both parties exchange change cipher spec messages to activate the negotiated security parameters. The protocol ends by both parties sending finished to each other. This is the first message that's actually encrypted and serves therefore as check whether everything worked out as planned. Now the encrypted payload can be exchanged between client and server and the handshake protocol is completed. I want to briefly touch on the record layer as well. The record layer is used to encapsulate the handshake layer's protocols. It is used to grant confidentiality and integrity. As hinted at previously, the record protocol uses the previously established master secret and derives from it the symmetric key used for the concrete connection. The record protocol uses MAC keys and symmetric keys to encrypt the connections. One big advantage of TLS is that this cumbersome process of the TLS handshake must only be done once, since once this session is established, every subsequent connection within this session uses the master secret through the record protocol. That means that multiple connections are possible once the session is established. And since we are on layers 5 and 6, developers can tailor security strategies to the actual application used. All the necessary steps to ensure that the protocol works are within the protocol itself and not outsourced, which makes TLS very efficient. However, that also means that TLS is not transparent or agnostic towards uh, the used application, like for example IPsec was. 
That concludes today's video. Thanks for watching. Tell me in the comments which topics you would like me to cover, like and subscribe to the channel and see you in the next video.